Hey guys, Coupons to Provide here, and today I'm coming at you with a dollar store DIY organizer. Now, of course, this concept is not new, and when I saw Pretty and Flawed's organizer that she posted for her cosmetics, it completely and totally just inspired me to make this for my craft space. Now, this tiered organizer actually ran me about 12 bucks. Everything was from the dollar store, so definitely keep that in mind when creating your projects that it does not have to break the bank. And of course, we're gonna be using very basic and staple supplies that I'm sure you all have in your home. We're gonna go ahead and start by taking some scrap poster board, a ruler, and a blade, and one of our rectangular faux acrylic trays from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna stand it upright on the poster board. When we put it on the poster board, we're going to allow the left and right side to have a nice border. The border is actually where we're gonna put our double-sided tape to keep our tiny little shelves in place. And that's actually what I'm going to refer the dividers as throughout the video so you know what I'm talking about. Once we figure it out what that length is gonna be, you can go ahead and carry that measurement down your poster board and draw a straight line. This is going to allow you to do one long cut to start off the whole sheet for the strips. Making a long cut like this to cut several strips at once will be easier as we go along with the project. You can make any trimmings or modifications later to make the side little strips smaller. So don't worry about making individual measurements for your different kinds of ink pads if that's what you're gonna be storing here. All I did now was put the tray back onto the poster board to see where the interior line is going to be. This is because we are actually going to cut a hairline strip to fold our little shelves to fit inside the tray. So you need to know what the width of the inside of the tray is so that you do not cut the strips any longer than that, which you'll see once we get to that point. So now that I've cut a strip kind of long enough to get multiple strips, I'm gonna go ahead and just prepare myself a second one because it's very easy to keep going and wanting more little shelves. So I'm just gonna pre-cut another strip and pre-prep it just like the first one. This is just gonna allow me to not have to do the measurements all over again once I'm further into the project and I may need some more strips. Now taking my ruler, I'm going to hold it on that dotted line that is actually the inside of the tray, okay? And I'm gonna take my blade and run it over very lightly on the surface or the first layer of the project board. What this is gonna do is allow for there to be a cut guide so that when we go through and fold down the feet of each one of the shelves, it will automatically fold but not rip off. You'll see what I'm talking about as soon as we get to that part. Now that we have our hairline cuts on our boards, we're gonna go ahead and take some double-sided tape and layer that on the borders of the shelves. The reason we're doing this is because the tape on those feet of each shelf will actually hold the strips in place. This is to provide a stable shelf for your items to sit on, okay? Now, if you don't have this kind of double-sided tape, feel free to use the Dollar Tree double-sided tape they have a more wide one that is out now, which I think is really nice. All you have to do to make sure that you get a nice thick layer is fold the tape onto itself to kind of create a double layer of tape and use that instead of maybe a tape with a paper backing. Also, if it gets in your way while you're working, get some wax paper and put it on there or some plastic sheeting and put it on there and just peel it off as you need it. So you can see that now I'm going through and cutting out each one of the strips. This is the part where I put the tray onto the paper and measured the inside of each one of the shelves. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut those out. Make sure they don't have to be perfect, guys. They're going inside of this little tray, so it does not have to be perfect. You can use scissors, you can use the blade, whatever you wanna do. And if you wanna be super ultra mega fancy, this is where you would take the opportunity to decorate each tray, maybe with some shelf liner or some duct tape. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and begin popping the feet on each one of the shelves. And this is why I said to create the hairline cut. Whenever you do that, it makes it really easy to pop the feet down, giving you a nice table look. And the shelf is the flat surface and the feet with the double-sided tape are actually the feet that are gonna hold the shelf in place in the tray. I think now you can kind of see what I'm going for. You're just going to kind of play with the distance between each one of your shelves. What I like to do is have the supplies that I'm gonna be putting into the trays or into the display uh, nearby and just pull those out and pop them in place and kind of play with the measurements and the width and everything of each shelf just to make sure that whatever I'm gonna put in there actually fits. Now, I actually really debated on creating these for washi tape, but if you're going to use it for washi tape, make sure that whenever you put your shelf in there, that you do a slight tilt. You want the front side to be tilted up so that the washi or anything round doesn't roll forward. You want it to roll back so that it doesn't fall out of the display. Definitely keep that in mind. But I do have a full DIY display that I actually made for my office, so I didn't want to change that up. I would definitely suggest doing that, though, because it would hold so much washi and have plenty of growing space for your growing collection. Because I know we're all victims to gorgeous washi. We buy it all, and it, who cares? It's gorgeous, right? So all I'm doing now is cutting some more from the second strip that I cut uh, to put into my other trays. Just a note, on these strips, I actually cut the width of the ruler, which is an inch and a half, and that was actually, I think, the perfect measurement for the size of each one of the shelves. I think it would definitely hold anything you wanna put in there, and it's not too short from the front of the tray. Okay, so in this next tray, I'm actually going to be storing wider ink pads. And these little feet kind of get in the way of each ink pad. If I leave it in there, I'm gonna to have to create a wider distance between each shelf, just wasting space, and we don't want that. So all I'm doing is trimming down the feet, making sure that I leave enough adhesive on each strip to keep them in place still, because we still need feet. But all of those extra strips actually come in hand if you wanna do something later that is optional that I'm gonna go over with you guys. So definitely don't throw away those strips because they do have double-sided tape on them and will actually come in handy as feet later for under the tray. Now, because I know I'm gonna be asked, because I am asked in every single video, the tape that I am using is the Basic Brand Tape. It's spelled B-A-Z-I-C Brand Tape. And I get that from King Dollar for $1.25. I don't know if you can find it online. I don't know like where else they sell it. I would definitely say do some research. I use this tape in every single one of my projects and I absolutely love this stuff. I have been using this since I was about 15 doing all of my random little tape projects and I never knew how awesome it was until this channel because it's very sturdy, it's a great adhesive, it's just a really awesome product so I would definitely say to check it out and see if you can find some. Also remember guys, I always make sure to mention that I use the most basic supplies in my tutorials because I want anybody and everybody to be able to complete these projects no matter what their craft stash is. You gotta admit that the projects that I do are with minimal supplies, easy steps because I want everybody to be able to create on a budget and stand back and be proud of what they're creating. Now if you're one of those that has an amazing craft stash, go ahead and substitute your products for what I'm showing here. Y'all have to remember that this is the foundation of the project itself. You guys with your seasoned or experienced skills can definitely modify it to make it more polished, more awesome, but I want to make sure that I reach every single person. We are doing this with everybody in mind. I'm not trying to show off. I don't have any reason to 
come on here and show you all the tools and all the cool things that I have just to make things more complicated. I want everybody to be able to do this, including you, including the people that don't have a lot of money, anyone that wants to get inspired and try something new. That is the whole purpose of my projects. Also, those of you that are new to the community, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I do hope that you enjoy your stay, and I do hope that when you spend time here on the channel, you feel as though it was worth it. And those of you that have been here, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. I appreciate the support, encouragement, enthusiasm behind the channel. You guys mean everything, and you are my actual inspiration for everything that I do here on the channel. Of course, if you know anybody that could find these types of videos useful, or maybe the planner videos, organization videos, or whatever other kind of videos, feel free to share, share, share. You guys ultimately determine how much or how large the community grows. I am definitely all about having quality over quantity, so share with people that you know would actually get use out of our playlists. All right, guys, I did leave all that footage in there so you could actually get a good view of what it was that I was going for and how much you can make it vary between all your displays. So now we're going to go ahead and take our dollar store Lazy Susan, which you can find them at Dollar Tree. I thought this one was from Dollar Tree, but it's actually from King Dollar. It's larger than the Dollar Tree ones. So on the Dollar Tree one, you could use four trays on the King Dollar one. You can use five. So what we're doing is adding some rubber feet. All I'm going to do is take the hot glue gun and add four points where you can see the crosses. And I'm making sure to allow that hot glue to extend all the way up onto the lip of each of that ring. The reason is because you want it to touch whatever surface you're sitting the tray on. And I'm gonna go in between and put more on the lip. It doesn't need a lot. You just need little points where it will actually hold in place. I'm going to take those strips of cardboard that we cut off earlier that already had the tape and add them to the bottoms of each one of the trays. The reason I'm doing this is because there is a lip on the tray and I want it to sit up even with that lip and that's just going to provide the perfect amount of height to keep them nice and even with the lip of the tray. Then I'm going to begin playing with the placement. Now again, on the King Dollar Tray, you could put five. On the Dollar Tree Tray, you could put four. So for this one, we're using five. As you can see, they fit very nicely and you could actually go ahead and begin gluing it down with hot glue. It will definitely work. I'm gonna show you an easy way to add more stability without using any strong or super you know, expensive adhesive or anything like that. So what I'm doing is I'm taking those feet and adding hot glue. I'm playing with the placement, putting them down, making sure that I have a very nice, clean looking product. Now, if you notice, I actually left all of the ink pads in the trays because I actually like to do things like this with the actual weight that's going to be in each tray. I like to see how it reacts, where it falls, and where the weaknesses are. So at the very top points where the trays meet, I'm adding a little thin, clean layer of hot glue I'm not putting too much or going too crazy. Um, you'll see what I use in just a second to keep the lower pieces together.
As I let that hot glue sit, I thought I would throw up a suggestion at this point. So you see the big empty space that is on the inside of this display. Definitely feel free to call it a day in the project and use this space maybe to store your thin washing in tubes or your tubes. You can empty them out and put them in there and put pins, markers, scissors, whatever you like. I'm actually not going to be doing that because I'm making a tiered display, but it's definitely an option. So I'm just simply taking some clear shipping tape and I chose clear because these are clear trays. You will see whatever you put in there clear shipping tape and layering it over the seams or the connecting spaces of those trays. And you see it works so well. I spun it very hard and it worked out perfectly. Now all I did was make another display using the Dollar Tree Lazy Susan and layered it on top of the bottom display that we just made. I added some hot glue under the connecting points and that was it guys. This has been so awesome and fun to make. I'm so sorry that it took so long, but of course you know that at Dollar Tree we kind of have to piece our tutorials together because sometimes it takes longer to get different things than not. I do hope that you enjoyed. I put all this stuff on here just to show you how you can really maximize the space on each one of your displays and you will definitely get your money's worth. It could fit so many different types of products and I absolutely love it. Now fair warning, the washi tubes do not fit right in that space like you see them. I actually had to trim them down a little bit and make sure if you do that, that you trim down little by little. Don't take off too much because you want them to fit snug and perfect in that space. Otherwise they won't stand up so nicely. And that is pretty much it guys. I do hope that you enjoyed this dollar store DIY. Also feel free to check out my DIY playlist where I have several other projects that you might find fun and easy to do. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, comment, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Google Plus and my Facebook group at Coupons to Provide. And don't forget guys, keep couponing. Bye. Bye.